Um, what I want to talk to you about is, on, is found in John chapter 5, verses um, 17, 19, and 20. So I'm just going to be focusing on a couple of things that Jesus specifically uh, shared in secret how he ministered. So um, what I wanted to do is I want to talk about faith, and I want to talk about an amazing faith. So we're going to be looking at uh, the, this passage, and we're going to start with verse 17, and it says, In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. One of the things I think... uh, in this year, and by the way, Happy New Year's. Um, I think we're going to see some incredible challenges. But I also believe with the challenges, I think we're going to have some incredible opportunities. I think there's going to be some incredible open doors. I wrote a book some years ago called The Shaking of the Nations. And um, more and more, I'm just seeing God fulfill what I wrote because Sometimes only when people get shook up will they look up. And uh, sometimes we have to go through trials and pain and difficulties in order to get our attention. Because when everything is going well, well, who cares? You know, as long as everything is going smooth. But when things go really bad, that's when we start looking around, well, how are we going to get help? How are, how are things going to turn out? How are things going to be? And so it makes us get uncomfortable. And sometimes, um, how many of you know you have to get your kids uncomfortable to get them to clean up after themselves, you know, and they don't want to do it? Well, that's too bad, isn't it? Because they have to do it. But what I want you to see is that uh, in this message that I want to share with you, I want you to know this. I, I, I'm hoping, and I want you to work with me on this. I want you to expect to see the Lord today. I want you to expect to see the Lord tomorrow. Because two things you're going to discover. God wants you to see him. And the reason he wants you to see him is he wants you to join him. Okay, and we're going to be looking at that. I want to compliment you because of prayer. Uh, I was with your prayer team just before service, and, and uh, I thank God for the victories that you have created through prayer. But I want to tell you something. That's half the battle. It's a critical part. It's a foundational part of the battle. But the other thing is, is prayer must find your feet. Okay? Prayer must find your feet. If you're going to pray and ask and request, and if you're going to bind and loose and and declare in the name of Jesus, then are you willing to be the answer of your own prayer? Sometimes we have wonderful visitations of prayer. God comes into the room and we go, I did the work. And it's true. You did a very critical part of the work. But the world will only see Jesus through you. You know, as much as we believe that God is out there doing things, I want to tell you that God has limited himself to his church. 
God has come through. What is the body of Christ today? It's the church. Now, I'm not saying God's not working sovereignly. He is. But uh, there's incredible dreams taking place. There's incredible calling by God in, in sending angels. I'm not, I'm not looking past that. But the greatest call of God for us is to work through the church, to work through us. God didn't give the Great Commission to the angels. He gave the Great Commission to us. Amen? Okay, well, I, I want to bring some uh, I, uh, concepts for you today. I want you to look. Uh, I'm going to deal with two things. First, today I want to make the point that God wants you to see him. And God wants you to join him. That's going to be my my thesis for today. Next week, I'm going to talk to you about how you join God in his work and how you can create the atmosphere wherever you live for for God to reveal himself. Okay? So it'll be the two things that we'll be talking about. So the context, how many of you know that you always have to put scripture in context, I'm, uh, I'm teaching at a Bible college now, and I ha- we drill into our students. You cannot just grab a scripture and use it. You can only use the scripture in context. You know, it's in the Bible. Judas hung himself. There's another place in the Bible. It says, go thou and do likewise. You know, so it's very, car- it's very important how you put scripture together, Okay. So what I want you to understand is that Jesus had just done an incredible miracle. He had just healed someone, and it was a lame person who couldn't walk, and he prays for them, God heals him, and he tells them a simple thing. Go home, pick up your bed, and go home. And it offended the Pharisees because they said, you cannot work on, this, on the Sabbath. You cannot pick up your bed. You cannot do anything on the Sabbath except rest and glorify God. And so Jesus was saying this. He was saying, I have done a good work. Shouldn't you do good on the Sabbath? And, of course, the Pharisees are really kind of irritated with Jesus right now, so they're not going to give him any ground. They're saying, no, you, you broke the Sabbath. Well, Jesus answers them, and he says this. He said, look, my father is working. Who do you think did the miracle? See, Jesus didn't do the miracle because he was God. Jesus did the miracle because God was using his son. Jesus deliberately has limited himself to being a man. Now, I want you to understand why. Why, did, why is it important for us to see Jesus as the perfect man? Not the perfect God, the perfect man. Why is that important? Yeah, he can't be our example if he's God. Because we're not God. So what he's saying is, look. God did this miracle. The father whom you worship, Moses whom you believe has brought Yahweh to you, he's the one that did this work. And I am doing the work of my father. I'm also working like that. And what he's saying is, at one point he says, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. He's saying, in other words, when you take time on the Sabbath to worship God, to rest and reflect on God, There's also one other thing God is doing. He's doing good. And when you are resting in the Lord and you're reflecting on the things of God, because we need that. We need Sabbath. We need to stop and slow down and reflect on the things of God. That's important, isn't it? Because otherwise we just run, run, run until we run out. But he's saying this. My father is also doing good works. And he said, you need to be doing good works uh, on the Sabbath. Now, the Pharisees aren't happy because in the process of explanation, he says, my father. No Pharisee ever calls God their father because they always, they wouldn't even pronounce the name Yahweh because it was so sacred. 
But here's Jesus blowing them out, saying, he's my father and I'm doing the works of my father. And so now they're mad at him because he's declaring himself to be actually Messiah. I am the expected one. I am the one that Father would send. I am the one you've been waiting for. And, of course, they didn't want to accept that. They didn't want Jesus uh, to be the Messiah because they wanted him to come to kick the Romans out of, Jew, out of Jerusalem and out of Israel. They wanted a warrior Messiah. Well, he didn't come. He came as the suffering Messiah, Isaiah 53. And so we see that Jesus was in the midst of controversy And out of that controversy comes an incredible secret. Go to the next slide. Jesus gives the secret of the power in his human ministry. Okay, go to the next slide. I put the only light bulb on in that one. You know, the Pharisees were a bunch of duds and he was a bright light. John was a bright light. Okay. So, I want you to look at John 5, 17 again. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I am working too. God wants to do work through you. Now, listen to what he said, though, earlier. He said this. He said, Greater works will my father show you so that you can be amazed. Do you think God does amazing things? If you haven't seen the amazing things God does, you need to get saved. Okay? Or you need to get some salve for your spiritual eyes so you can see. And that's what we want to talk about. God is doing works around you every day. When the sun comes up, you're watching God. When your kids take a breath of air in the morning, you're watching God. When you have heat and warmth and food and shelter, you're seeing God. See, God even takes care of the heathen, and they don't even know it to give them praise for it, but we do, right? So here's the point. God not only wants to have you grateful He would like to have you see. He wants you to see him at work. We just saw God at work this week. I worked with a little group um, in a mobile home park. It's called Foothill Mobile Park right next to uh, Powell Stadium. And uh, we've been working there now for almost a half a year. And we've been building our prayer house there. And we've been trying to draw people into our time of prayer, but many of them are not Christians. Uh, Many of them are Christians or they're Catholic. And uh, so they've been kind of leery of us, and we've been trying to build uh, trust with them. The devil has done everything he can to destroy that parking lot. Six months ago, the state came in and said that they were going to declare imminent domain and kick all those 200 people out onto the streets. This is a very poor community. This is the step just before you go to the streets. And they were going to build new houses for the poor. Finally, we got a message to New- at Gad, Gad Newson. Is that how you pronounce his name? Gavin Newson. Um, we've already got them. We already got the cheapest rent, and we've already got a place for them. Don't kick them into the streets. Sometimes people who want to help are missing the point. (laughs) Anyhow, God rescued it. We prayed and prayed and prayed, and God rescued it. It's an interesting thing. I can't tell you all the things, but the gal who's the manager of the thing was also a leader at a church and had set up a a room for the Democratic Caucus uh, a few years ago, And she sent a note back and said, don't forget, I did you a favor. Well, when the owner of the park went to talk to the governor, she said, oh, by the way, he said, by the way, a friend of yours said, don't forget the favor you owe him. And so that kept the city from declaring imminent domain. But this last week, we had someone sue the park. They came in and were going to sue it for a 
ton of money. And the owner said, I'm sick and tired of all the problems and all the lawsuits. He said, if, the, if they win that suit in court, I'm selling the park and I'm going to sell it to a developer and it, I'm going to be rid of it. We prayed and prayed and prayed and cried out. And our, the manager was very discouraged and her name's Lucy and and she was almost hiding from us. We would have to kind of find her to talk to her. And uh, we kept saying this, God is on the throne. God isn't going to let this happen. God is going to step in because we're praying and we're declaring and we're believing. Well, last Friday at 11 o'clock, we went to court. The guy who was there got so nervous, the judge was watching him and decided, this isn't, this isn't good. He denied everyone. Of the, of the things asked in the suit and just threw it out. And we just praised God. Well, I told Lucy, I, I, she, I'm trying to learn Spanish. And so I wrote in her in Spanish, you know, that praise God for the deliverance he gave us. I saw God. When's the last time you saw God? And it's not that he wasn't there. It's just that you weren't looking or you weren't seeing. And I want to talk to you about that. So the next thing is, Jesus did not do what he wanted to do. He did what God wanted him to do. Listen to me. When you get up in the morning, it's not your responsibility to do something for God. God doesn't need you to do things for him. God's very capable of himself. What God wants you to do is what he wants you to do. Now, let me say that again, because some of you are busy doing things for God. Oh, today I'm going to do this, and today I'm going to do that. Did you even talk to God about it? Should you do that? Should you be doing that? Well, it's a good thing. That's not the point. Is that what he wants you to do? So Jesus is saying this. Look at uh, John 8, 28. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do what? Nothing on my own, but I speak what the Father has taught me to speak. Back there in chapter 5, it said, he says, the Son does what the Father is doing. So why, why is that important? I'm going to knock this poor thing over. Sorry, that was such a lovely worship service. I don't want to hurt anybody's instrument here. Thank you. You know what? Where are you guys when I need you more? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, what I want you to understand here is this. God wants to do amazing things through you. Now, let's talk about that. The important thing here is this. When God does work, what kind of work does he do? He sets the stage for you. God, like let's say you're praying for your boss. You know, I, I want to share my faith with my boss, but he's busy and I'm kind of low on the totem pole and I don't know when I'll ever see him or really get an opportunity. But Lord, I, I believe you want me to talk to my boss. And so you start praying to God. And you know what God does? God starts setting it up. He starts setting up the circumstance. He starts setting up the timing. He starts getting people in place so that when the time comes, there it is. There's your moment. There's the door. There's the opportunity. Are you ready? Because you see, you say, well, God, you're not working. No, he is working. But he's working to set up the opportunity for you. You say, well, why don't you just do it? I don't want to do it. I want you to do it. That's why you're the church. You're the church. You're the ones who are supposed to manifest and show forth the glory of God, right? Could he send an angel? Absolutely, and he does. Could he just sovereignly speak into the mind of the boss? Yes, he can, and he does. But you know what? Listen to me. When we go into heaven for eternity, you know what you're going to feel proud about? You know what you're going to rejoice about? That God in all of his greatness used you. 
You partnered with God. You worked with God. And God, why does God do that? Listen to me. Now, this goes beyond my sermon. God is preparing you for eternity. Because God's going to be turning over whole solar systems to you. You're going to be out there doing things that only God does, but it's going to be given to the faithful, to those who were serving the Lord, looking to serve the Lord, looking to obey and walk in the way of the Lord. Does that make sense? So what is God doing? He says, my father is working. What was the father doing around Jesus? He was setting it up for Jesus. When Jesus goes and takes it, gets his baptism, John's there and John says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus goes into the water. What does the Father do? The Holy Spirit comes down in the form of a dove and the Father says, My beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You think that God just had some thunder rolling? You think that God was ready for that situation? God was setting up that situation. How many of you know God has set you up? Any of you ever had a setup, a divine setup? If you haven't, pray. Ask for God to anoint you so that you can see it because God wants to set you up. And the fact is, I'm going to tell you something. I know God has set you up. You might have just walked through it. You were praying and praying and praying and praying. God moved, he worked, he set it up, and you weren't ready. How many of you have driven home and said, I should have said something. Wow, that was such an ideal moment. Man, everything came together. I blew it. But how many times didn't you not even realize you blew it? You just walked through it. Yeah, but I'm praying. I'm asking God. I'm prevailing. And God's listening. Yes, yes, I'm going to set it up for you. And then, woo, you just walk right through it. You say, yeah, but wasn't God supposed to send somebody else to do it? Wasn't God supposed to? No, God wants you to be amazing. Isn't that amazing? (laughs) God wants you to have an incredible testimony. When we go stand before the Lord on that day, and we're saying, Lord, I led my son to the Lord. Lord, I was a Boy Scout leader, and I led the troop to the Lord. And and Lord, there was a person healed. And you know what God's going to be thinking in the back of his mind? I know I set it all up for you. And I'm so proud of you because you caught it. And you let me work through you. Do you know every testimony we have belongs to God? Do you know what God's going to do when we're standing up in heaven and we're being crowned and we're, being, we're walking around with Jesus like little kings and queens? We're going to take our, throw, our, our crowns off and we're going to throw them at the feet of Jesus. Why? Because he's the one. He's the one that gave you the authority, gave you the power, set it all up for you. So God is working today. You believe that? Oh, well, no, it's the Super Bowl. God's taking, he's watching the Super Bowl, right? You know, God's going to work today. He wants you to see him. Have any of you ever said, oh, God, where are you? Oh, God, I'm going through such misery. Oh, God, things are so bad. Oh, God, I'm asking you to come. Oh, God, where are you? And God's going, I'm right here. What? Are you here, God? You know what Isaiah says? How blind are my people. How blind are my people. How many of you have ever come to church and been surprised? <laughs> I'm going to meet with God's people, and, I, and that's where God comes, and that's where God's glory is. And <gasps> he showed up. People got healed. People got touched. Why are you surprised? You see what I'm saying? We should be walking around expecting. Now, if you're going to be expecting, that also means you're seeing. And so one of the things that, would you go to the next slide?
God is setting the stage, but it's no good unless you show up. Now, let me say this. There are times when God may have to use someone else. There was a healing evangelist named Catherine Coleman during the 70s, very powerful gift of healing and, and miracles. And she, in her testimony, said God did not choose her for that ministry. She, he chose a man. Now, I don't know how she knew all this, but this was her testimony. And she said she was God's third choice. God wants to set things up for you, but if you don't want to see, it doesn't mean God won't find someone else to get the job done. Okay? Do you want to miss God's blessing? I remember one time um, in the early days of the uh, Jesus movement and the charismatic movement when I was just learning about the Holy Spirit. I was a Baptist. I believed in the Holy Spirit. I had my doctrine right. I just didn't know him. And I remember one time I was praying, and I said, I got a word of knowledge on someone to be healed. And so I went down, and I said, I, I, I shared the word, and I, I started to pray for the person. And the person jumped, and it was the weirdest thing. It just all went down. There was a whole bunch of family sitting on one row. It went down the row and knocked the person off at the end. And I sat there and went, Whoa, you know, that surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. But I want you to know something. God didn't do that to say, hey, you know, you did a pretty good thing. That family, several of them came to Christ. That was the purpose of miracles. The purpose of miracles is that people will spend eternity with God in heaven. Do you know that there's people who have done miracles, but they don't lead people to Jesus. They don't cause people to understand the most important thing of all is to be discipled, lead people to Jesus, and to disciple. Does that make sense? So the question mark is, will you step into the place that God has prepared for you? He set the stage. Go to the next thing. I know I'm taking a little bit of time here. But I want to uh, try to bring it home. So what I do want to talk to you to end today, how do I prepare to join God in his work? Now, next week we'll talk about how you do it. But I want you to prepare yourself. You can prepare yourself to see God. Okay? So if you're saying, I remember... Um, different ones over the years that would come and say, oh, I just want to see a miracle. And I don't know if they've seen their miracle or not, but I want you to know this, you can be the miracle. Let me say that again. You could be the miracle. Because, listen to me, you have nothing. Let me come down. Is this going to ruin the thing? Sorry if people out there aren't seeing me as good as they should. You have been chosen by God because he loves you, and he died for you, has always loved you. He's not going to love you any more than he loves you now, okay? And he wants to do great things through you, and he wants you to see him, and he wants you, when you see him, that is your invitation to join him. Now, I've had the experience of realizing all of a sudden this is a setup. God has set this thing up. And it scares me. And I'm going, am I going to do this or am I not going to do this? Because I want to tell you something. When God does show himself, it, it's more than you can do. And it's usually very embarrassing. Because now you've got to reveal yourself. Now you've got to step into it. Now you've got to say, you know what, I think God has set this up, and I want, to, I want you to, can I pray for you? Can I, you know, can I say something to you? Can I see, you know, help you in some way? You have to extend yourself, right? And it's a little scary. But when you get more, you're better and better and better at that, 
the Bible says, greater things will he show you. Isn't that what it says in John 14, 12? He says, greater work shall you do than I have done because I'm going to the Father. Think about that. Jesus fed 5,000, walked on water, stopped storms, greater things. What does that mean? What does that mean? You know, Brother Wade, most of you have known my sidekick, Brother Wade Seaman. He couldn't be here today. He's got a mother-in-law who, um, or a stepmother, who lives up in the, uh, the, I believe it's the hills outside of Aptos, way up high. There was a huge storm about a year ago where trees were snapping and winds were blowing through. And um, she lives in a house that has a glass side uh, to the house. And so here's all this, you know, pine cones, branches, leaves, you know, pine needles. It's like uh, machine guns hitting the glass. And she was wondering, how long is this glass going to stay together? And she, he said, she told uh, Wade, she said, I got to the place where I decided instead of being scared and worried, she said, I walked to the windows and I said, stop it. <laughs> she said, in Jesus' name, stop it. And it was an amazing storm because at the end there was a huge branch that broke. It was, it was a huge log and it was buried right in front of the house. where it, it was heading for the house and went right into the ground. They had to dig it out. Within, she said, within minutes it stopped. Now you can say, well, it, she guessed right, you know, <laughs> or she lucked out. I don't think so. I think she took her faith and stopped it. We don't know what we have. We don't know. Listen to me. If God is living in your heart, if you have the Holy Spirit, what else do you need? Well, you know what? I need the preacher. Or you know what? I need the deacon. Or, or I need someone more experienced. And we downplay who we are. When God wants to say, no, no, I'm setting this up so you can step in and be a son and daughter of God. You see what I'm saying? So how do I prepare myself? 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. What does it mean to be asleep? It means you're spiritually dull or blind. You're asleep, you're a Christian, you're going to heaven, you just can't see what God's doing. Or if you do see it, it's because God all of a sudden probably sent a hurricane that made you realize God's, you need to do something in God. Now, what I'm saying here is you need to stay awake. That's the whole idea behind renewal. I need to wake up. <laughs> Maybe when you wake up in the morning, Wake up, Dan. God's moving today. I want to see it. Help me, Jesus. Now, you don't have to hit yourself. You know, the kids will really get worried if you run around the house going, wake up, wake up. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. You'll probably, they'll come get me. Um, wake up. Stay awake. That's what Jesus said. He said, about the, vest, the Vestal Virgins, remember the, the, the virgins, the ten virgins? It says five brought extra oil, five didn't. And it says Jesus came. And it says the five went in because they were ready and the others were off trying to get more. You know, the saddest thing in the Bible is we can miss it. I'm not going to get into all of that. But some of you won't be at the wedding feast. They said the ones that get into the wedding feast had extra oil. You say, well, what happened to the others? Well, they probably got saved later. <laughs> Jesus doesn't forget his kids. But we miss what God wants to do. 
during the Jesus movements, the ones that were getting healed and, and they, they, a lot of them didn't really know what was happening. They thought Jesus was kind of a bigger high. You know, they were kind of coming into the church to get the Jesus high. But some of them really did get saved. They really did get God. And they were radical. When they finally figured out this is real, this is Jesus, and they went out in the streets and they saw some incredible things. It was an incredible movement. But I want you to understand something. You cannot be a passive Christian. If you're a passive Christian, you'll go to sleep. You will. You cannot live life under pressure and anxiety and not have to protect yourself in some way. And most of us will either medicate or we'll just sleep. I find when people are depressed, they just want to sleep. They just want to get away from it. And I want to say this, that many of you are doing, you love the Lord, you're following the word, you're doing the thing that God is asking you to do the best you know how, but it's tiring and it's exhausting. And you're saying, I'm doing it, Jesus, just I hope I can get there. I hope I can cross the line. That is not abundancy. Do you see what I'm saying? That's not abundancy. What that is is endurance, hoping you'll get over the line. I'm 78 years old, and I'm still wanting more. I want God to, I want to be amazing. <laughs> My wife's going, mm-mm, you know, back there. But I think you know what I mean. I'm not trying to woo-woo people. What I'm trying to do is be awake be awake the only reason why I'm here is I've stayed awake the other thing is is to stay sober sober is the word for self-control that means I discipline myself to stay awake how do you stay awake worship word service doing good deeds but being in the presence of the Lord Allowing the Lord to entertain, to host the presence of the Lord. I really do, the, the Bible says this, worship is the gate by which you step into the presence of God. And as you truly worship, now I'm not saying, Jesus loves me, this I know. I mean, at the end of the morning, you can say, oh, I, I sang my song, I read my scriptures, I'm ready to go, hallelujah, Jesus. I put on the armor of God, I'm ready to go. And the devil looks at you and says, you don't even know what you said. You just quoted a bunch of words, and you just said a bunch of things, and I'm going to slap you silly when you get to work. You walk into work, bam, bam, what? That's on fire? Oh, no, you know, and says, where were you, God? I worshipped you this morning, and God says, Okay, life is still going on, right? So what you end up doing is you have to be in Christ, be in the Lord. That's what the armor is. The armor is not a bunch of words. It's in Christ. So preparing yourself. Don't excuse yourself. Do not disqualify yourself. Don't do it. If you're a son and daughter of God and you've received Jesus Christ and followed him in baptism, you are a son and daughter of God. Listen to me. You are divine. You are going to rule with Christ. You're going to see things. You're going to do things in eternity that will pop your brain because you are an extension of God. Isn't that what has to be restored, the image of God? Hallelujah. So wake up. Practice being awake. Don't disqualify yourself. Remember, it's nothing about your ability. You may not even be good looking. You may even be ugly. But that has nothing to do with God using you. Let's do it this way. Here's the glory. The glory's coming down. Hallelujah, Jesus. Look at all the things you're doing in China. Look at the things you're doing in India. Wow! When somebody comes through, do you know what he's, wow, look at the glory, look at it, it's just, wow, I'm so blessed, I'm going to go pray now. What does God want you to do? Step under the glory 
and become a channel. You say, well, what will that look like? Most likely, someone will walk up at the coffee while everybody's having coffee at work and say, you know what? My husband left me last night. I am so broken. I am so angry. I am so upset. And you're going, hmm, hallelujah, hallelujah. No, that's the time you step in and say, can I pray for you? You pray? You're a Christian? <laughs> Hopefully they're not shocked. You know, you're a Christian? Oh, yeah, pray for me. Yeah, I need it. And what does that do? It gives God something to work with. Have you ever had anybody come back and say, you know, you asked God about this. And that. It happened. You see what I'm saying? You step in and become a channel for the glory. I want you to be able to stand up here and say, I stood under the glory. It channeled through me. And you know what happened? Boom, 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 boom. And then guess who God is thrilled with? He's thrilled with you. One last thing. You must ask for, what did Jesus say? Those, it says, those who hear, let them hear. Can you ask for ears and eyes today? Now, it starts sometimes small. Someone comes along, and all of a sudden you see that they're down, and you encourage them. Do you think encouragement can be a gift? It's actually a gift, a gift of encouragement. Do you think God's pleased? Did you just step into something God gave you? And when God knows that you could be, what, faithful in little, he'll make you give you much. You just got to be faithful in the little. So you can't go... Oh, uh, past, uh, Pastor Dan, there's someone here ready to be saved. There's someone here who needs encouragement. Uh, do you have a lunch hour free? Don't do that. If I know you're doing that, I won't listen. Because it's you. You say, well, I'm scared. Hmm? Join the crowd. <laughs> there's always the, you know, the combat scene where the sergeant and the private's there, and the private says, I'm scared, sergeant. He says, me too. You know, well, you know, we can all be scared. Scared doesn't exclude you, and it doesn't give you an opportunity to step aside. So it's not the size of the challenge, it's the size of God for you. And if God's God, give it a shot. The worst they could do is, oh, you asked to pray for me, I don't believe in prayer, get away from me. That's fine. Persecuted for Jesus, hallelujah. Go home and say, Lord, I took a shot for you. Right? But what if they open up? You know, we're so afraid of failing. How many of you know that when you're learning a new job, you're going to make a mistake? If you're not willing to make a mistake, you won't be able to do it. So it's okay. Failure teaches you. But you have to step forward. I remember the first time I learned to speak in tongues, and it became real to me, and the Holy Spirit became real to me. In my head, I put it together, and I said, I'm speaking a divine language, and God uses this. And I remember I was out walking down the streets of San Jose, and I saw a Hare Krishna priest out, and he was doing the chant and all that. And I walked up and just started speaking in tongues because I knew God would give him the language, give me the language, and he would come to Jesus. Instead, I drew a big crowd around me, and the priest was looking at me, and I said, so, do you understand what I said? And he says, no. And he says, what are you saying? I say, in Sanskrit or something like that? And I go, okay, now I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> Actually, I was with a Baptist evangelist who got blown out when I started speaking in tongues. <laughs> he kept walking. So I had to go find him. <laughs> His question was, what was all that about? You know? <laughs> I blew it. But I thought it, I understood it. And it's okay. I understand it now. I don't do that. But I do want you to understand something. If you're not willing to fail, you won't take the risk. You've got to take the risk. The worst that can happen is, oh, no, don't pray for me. That's Okay. But if they let you, that's when it all begins. It all begins by asking, 
what is your need? How can I pray for you? How can I love you? How can I help you? That's really what they want. Okay, hit the next one. So this is what we'll deal with next week. How do I recognize and step into God's invitation to bring to being amazing? And how do I create an atmosphere for God to work? So we'll look at that more closely, okay? Okay, I was told to wrap it up. Is that what that means? Uh, <laughs> no, he didn't do that. My wife did it. Okay, so. <laughs> but anyhow, I um, praise God. Now, let me, let me say this. God put this on my heart this morning. And I'm, I'm done. The sermon's done. Okay, so I just want to talk about a little bit of ministry for you. I was reading in my devotions. Uh, it's important how you go to bed. If you go to bed worried, you'll wake up worried. If you go to bed blessed, you'll wake up blessed. Okay, so you be careful how you go to bed. And it also affects your sleep. I was reading this devotional by a guy named Bill Johnson, and he said this. He said, there is no sickness in heaven. There is no anxiety in heaven. There is no depression in heaven. When you say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, if you believe that, you've created a heaven spot. Anybody want to step into the heaven spot? Yeah, you are, but not for the person depressed, not for the person who's sick. So who's depressed, who's sick, who needs to step into the heaven spot? Because I'm going to say this, Lord, right now, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. Okay, who wants to step into the heaven spot? You want to step into the heaven spot? Come on, on. come on. What do you want me to pray for? Okay. Here. This is where the heaven spot is. Okay. Jesus. What's your name? Matthew. Matthew. Oh, good biblical name. Father, I thank you. I don't know what the particular need is in his life, but he's in the heaven spot. And Father, we know that there is no sickness in heaven. So Lord, we're asking right now in the name of Jesus that you heal this young man. Lord, you heal him, you meet the need, you fill his heart with your love, your grace, your strength. And Lord, we receive it because your word is true. And we have operated on your word and it is therefore your will. And so, Lord, we receive your will in this heaven spot for this young man. And we're just asking for a good report in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you tell us when you're feeling better? Are you feeling okay? Okay. Anyone else? It's okay. You go, just remember, right in the middle of the Super Bowl, you're going to think, oh, I'm depressed. I'm really not going through this well. And you missed the heaven spot. Now, can you create your own heaven spot? You can, if you believe it. You know what the devil does? This is all for free. It's not part of anything. You say, I trust you, Jesus, and the devil goes, no, you don't. Lord, I believe you can heal me, and the devil goes, no, you don't. And you know what happens? You begin to doubt. Do I really believe him? Am I this? And you know what he says? Look how bad it is. When God is saying what? Look at me. And so the devil's going, no, 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 no. Look over here. Look how bad this is. You know the thing I hate when I pray for people to be healed? You don't understand, Pastor. I've gone through 32 operations. You know, I've been to the best surgeons, and, and I'm, I'm depressed. I've been pressed for 30 years. And I just tell them, you know what? I don't need to know all that. What I want to know is, do you want Jesus to heal you? And I want you to look to Jesus. You see what I'm saying? I've had people depress me during healing meetings. <laughs> where I need to get workers to come over and pray for me to start looking at Jesus, you know. So those are important, those are important steps. Amen. Anybody else want to step in the heaven spot? Going, going, <laughs> gone. Okay. Well, let's bow our heads. We're going to have our time of prayer. 
no, I won't pray for the 49ers. You know, that is, that it will not be done. Actually, I'm, I'm for the Chiefs. Shh. Shh. Do, do, do. Shh. For, pray for me. Pray for us sinners in the hour of our victory. <laughs> I won't feel bad. I mean, I won't. (laughs) I'm in trouble. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your love, for your grace. Lord, thank you for your people. And God, I ask you to just bless us as we go. Give us your eyes to see. Give us your ears to hear. And give us courage to do, to get under the glory, to become the channel in that moment. And Lord, then we'll come back with great testimonies, great testimonies. And I pray that for us in Jesus' name. Amen.